All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Chasing Edges podcast. Got an absolute monster on today. Colin Moore, four-time All-American, three-time Big Ten champ, U.S. Olympic alternate, all the above, bunch of tournaments under his belt. He's a pro. Uh, Thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. Dude, I'm uh, I'm pumped because first wrestler on the podcast and just the wrestling and the one-on-one sports intrigued the fuck out of me too. So it's uh, I'm excited about the conversation. But kind of how I start all these off is just like – what are you curious about right now? Like, where are you chasing edges, trying to get better in your life? Yeah, so for me, I think the the next big thing, as I kind of get older into the sport and, um, you know, get to the highest, highest level, is where I see the top guys in the sport, like maybe Dake and Taylor. They're super – they have every little detail about their life kind of mapped out. So for me, it's probably, like, nutrition – And just kind of that like overall health, like the small stuff that is going to help me compete longer as I get older and stuff like that. Yeah, I, 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 that's, I'm, I'm a biohacker edge chaser concept. Uh, What kind of areas are you looking at trying to improve in, in that regards? Like, so like from a nutrition standpoint, are you trying diets? Like what's going on? Um, yeah, so just uh, diets, I want to eat a little cleaner. And then just make sure that like just the little stuff that you don't realize is going into your body when you buy some of these foods and like when you eat certain places. Um, So that stuff has been really kind of intriguing to me. I'm starting to think a lot more about that, like what I'm putting into my body instead of just like calories or like, hey, I got to eat. I'll throw something together really quick, like really thinking about what exactly is going in and what it's doing for me health wise um stuff like that and yeah it's, then, a, it's a massive rabbit hole yeah, <laughs> yeah you, when well, you start yeah. learning to like google a word that you can't say anyways and uh-huh. figure out that it's potentially toxic side effects all those kind of things yeah i've i've slowly gone down that rabbit hole i just now i just try and do like the one ingredient foods for the most part and then i've been doing core g's anabolic fasting stuff and i've been yeah. diving into that but i mean the wrestling's a whole different world because like the energy systems you use and those kind of things um, but that is just a massive, uh, I think it's a massive benefit long-term, even like the sleep and, um, I guess what reflects a pro, what, what makes you think that the other guys have things dialed from that aspect? You guys are a pretty tight knit community too, aren't you? Yeah. So exactly. I just hear him talk about it and at training camps there, I just see the way they do stuff, even like directly after practice or, you know, when what my plate looks like versus what their plate looks like at the, you know, the food hall after and stuff like that, um, is pretty drastically different. No, I'm with you. And, uh, and like, I don't think, I think that's like a, like a great awareness to understand. Like, cause like, obviously like you're knocking on the door of like being the best in the country and the best in the world at what you do, which is why I'm stoked to talk to you in general. (laughs) But like that's where like I mean when I was in the NFL I talked about this on the last podcast with Bert a little bit I'd walk in and like I'd find the best players and I'd find the pro like the guys have been in there the longest and I'd like kind of observe and dissect their habits and like I'd pick up stuff and try it and see if it worked for me see yeah. if I felt a difference and like just being that level of curious paid dividends for me too and most guys are willing to teach you and I know it's a little it's probably a little different in a one on one sport hey yeah I mean that as I've actually gotten older and kind of grown into like a real leadership role around the Ohio state guys, you kind of learn as one of the older guys that like, you can't, it's not your job anymore to like go seek people out to try and help them. Mm. So I've realized like, I'm just going to help the people that come to me and ask me stuff and are really curious about learning, you know, like, especially cause I'm still training. I don't really have, the time or the energy to like go out and like seek people to help them because most of the time if they're not seeking you they don't want to be helped no i i completely agree and or if you're too scared to ask or intimidate like that like that's a problem in and of, in yeah. and of itself yeah. too no i'm a like through my experience too I, i've learned that that like i used to chase guys down to get them to watch film and things like that and it's just uh it's wasted energy. You're not gonna. You can't pull somebody up that doesn't want to step up, kind of deal. Yeah. And that's where, like, yeah, it's massive amounts of wasted energy. But so as like, so you're as in the coaching world now. Like, how's that helped you uh, as far as your own training? It's been great. Um, at first, you know, I would do clinics all over the country, and 
it's kind of crazy when you start teaching a move how much you like i know what i'm doing and i know how to hit the move but i don't i didn't know how to explain it like i missed so many details when i started showing people wrestling and it's really helped me kind of break down everything i do and almost understand what i'm doing a little bit more so maybe i can tweak it myself and kind of change it and make it a little better and understand what I'm actually doing with my body. Because a lot of times you just try stuff and practice and right. Your body's just does it, but you don't really understand like where your weight's going, how you're manipulating your body. And then once you kind of understand that, cause you're explaining it and trying to get someone else to do it, it really helps kind of break down your own wrestling and understand and kind of improve your own technique, which has been really cool. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to get this later in the podcast, but since we brought it up, like, how do you improve the skill set? Like, because uh, like, so I've just started to get into like jujitsu the last couple of years, and I never played one on one sports. Like, the closest yeah. I got to that was pitching and baseball kind of concept. But I like the the culture in jujitsu is really cool because yes, it's a one on one sport, but the culture around the sport is just so massively supportive because everybody knows you're going to compete on your own, whether you're in the like weight class or whatnot. Like, so like yeah. it's just the, the culture is cool, but like the, how to demo or like how to improve technique, I'm still learning. Like I'm still learning the whole language in general. So like, this is more geared towards wrestling now. Like, how do you, like, how do you go about it? Is it trial and error and practice? Um, is it the company you keep those kind of things? Yeah. So, Obviously, I've had great coaches that understand a lot about wrestling, and they each kind of bring in their own unique style and aspect. Um, and a, a lot of it is just watching wrestling, seeing something like, oh, that was cool. Or said, like, that that worked. Like, he keeps doing this. He keeps catching guys with this. And you just kind of watch film. And then the biggest thing for me has been just coming in in, like, the mornings with somebody and just trying it out over and over and over again asking them like oh how'd that feel and they're like what are you feeling when i do this and then you just kind of for an hour you know every now and then just come in work it out try new things um so that's been super beneficial and then you try and do it in live and it almost never works out <laughs> <laughs> the first time or like i said before like it, it might work but you don't really understand why it worked and then the more you do it and the, the different people you try it on and you try to explain it to somebody else. Now you kind of understand like how the move works and you can kind of build off that. Um, so right now I'm trying to do everything to the other side of the body, which is really hard. What do you mean the other side of the body? So I shoot like a head outside single um, righty. So okay. I'll penetrate to my right, my right knee first. My head's on the outside of their right side of their body. Yeah. So now I'm trying to do everything to the other side. So I'm hitting my left knee or I'm stepping with my right leg first, or I'm posting with my right arm instead of my left, just because I I feel like I gotta have something else in yeah. my. Well, it's kind of like uh, yeah, it's kind of like switching up uh, your style in boxing, like switching the southpaw yeah. kind of deal. That's awesome. So that's been a challenge, but it's just kind of going in and understanding. Like the other day, I was in the the room with uh, Caleb yep. Romero. He's been here. Um, and I could not understand for the life of me why this move was not working. And then finally it hit me like we were just talking about it. And my head, I was starting with my head on the wrong side the whole time. And so just little stuff like that, the more you do it, light bulbs start turning on and it's fun. Yeah, for sure. And you you have a bunch of savages to train with here at Ohio State too, which makes it. Definitely uh, helps. Yeah, definitely <laughs> helps. As far as like the, like, have you sought out other coaching? Um, how's that work in like the professional world of wrestling? Yeah. Or, or, um, or like other wrestling partners because it is like UFC where like you're trying to like find guys of whatever they match your competition or yeah. like your whatever your villain foe type concept. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, you know, the wrestling community, and I'm sure it's like this with jujitsu and most other sports, but everyone's super willing to share knowledge with each other. It's actually really cool. So when you go to these training camps, um, and all of the national team is there and guys you compete against, you're really, no one there is afraid to ask each other questions or like help on technique or stuff like that or to watch video. So that's been really cool. In the back of my mind, I'm always like, I don't want to give away 
Yeah, that's a, all my secrets. It's an interesting concept. I'm but, sure everybody feels the same way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's still like everybody's chasing the same dream. Yeah, but it's cool. There's all there's so many coaches there, and just it, it's it's always a great learning environment. We're just very comfortable asking anybody a question on something. They're yeah. always want to help. Yeah, that's dope. But I, I and I, I love that about jujitsu as well. But so while we're in like the U.S. camp territory, that kind of thing, just. When was the first time you uh, repped the USA? Uh, that would have been, I think my, it was after my red shirt year at Ohio State. Okay. I made the junior world team. So that was in uh, Macon, France. Let's go. Yeah. You, yeah you, where all have you traveled for wrestling? Um, so France, then Finland, then Romania, Rome, uh, Poland, and I think that might be it. We were talking yeah. about uh, are you going to Russia at some point, up to, up into Siberia or something. I was hoping to this year. The, the way it's kind of like smack dab in the middle of these two ranking series tournaments. Mm. So not this year, but I absolutely want to get to uh, the Uregan. It's called. It's in the middle of Siberia, and it's supposed to be the toughest tournament in the world. I mean, it, so. it sounds like the toughest. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I, want, I want to get there at some point. Yeah, so uh, with what you got coming up, um, what are the two tournaments again? So it's the Maton Pelicone in Rome, Italy. That's the first ranking series tournament. And then uh, I forget that what it's called, but it's in Istanbul, Turkey. That's the second ranking series tournament. All right, and and the goal here we talked about a little bit before this, but is to accrue enough points to qualify for worlds. Yeah, so it, well, it won't qualify you for worlds, but if you make the world team, it will get you uh, seated. Okay. So the more ranking points you have, the is where you get seated in the bracket. And so if you have no ranking points going into the world championships, you yeah. actually don't get seated. You could be a returning world champion. And I'm pretty sure with no ranking points and come in and get put anywhere in the bracket. Okay, like you could wrestle a number one seed yeah. kind of concept. Um, so like, what's the qualifying requirements then? This is all new world to me. So, yeah, so you have to qualify for world team trials, whether it be you made it the previous year or you're like an age group uh, world team member or you take like top five at U.S. nationals. Or just there's a bunch of different stuff to qualify for world team trials. So is this like a massive? Is world's massive tournament? Like how many wrestlers are in each weight weight class? Uh no, there's only probably about sixteen because okay. you you can only get um one per country, which okay. makes it super hard. Okay, so so, then, so you gotta so I guess how do you qualify for your weight class versus the other U.S. guys right now for the world? Yeah, so you go to world team trials and then. So the way USA Wrestling does it right now, if you medal at Worlds the year before, you sit in the finals. Okay. And they call it Final X um, for some reason. <laughs> SpaceX, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so if you win World Team Trials, then you go to Final X, and it's the best two out of three. Oh, damn, let's so go. whoever wins that is the representative. Best two Worlds. out of three. Uh, are they all, like, just back-to-back-to-back to back to back that day? or like? Yeah. It's, oh, man. Yeah. Let's go. So. <laughs> It's, it gets pretty intense, and it used to be – now it's, uh, you know, separated, but it used to be – you used to have to wrestle the the world team trials bracket that day, and then the next day you would wrestle the best two out of three. Okay. And wrestle somebody who hasn't wrestled at all yet because they're sitting in the finals. Interesting. What an advantage. Yeah. That's so it's, crazy. It's it, cause it, that, is that what happened to you at Worlds this year? Is that the same – uh, scenario is that like you went through the bracket and then yeah yeah so Kyle um, the guy who beat me at the Olympic trials my old teammate Kyle Snyder um, he another, medaled another Buckeye yeah yeah he medaled the year before so he was sitting in the finals the whole bracket so I had to go through the bracket yeah and then wrestle him best two out of three that's but that's bananas yeah that's uh I don't think there's any other sport that does that is there. I don't think so. I know a lot of other sports. I know like track, you take like top three, get to go to the Olympics for every event. Okay. Swimming is like, there's like three or four people from each country. Um, obviously, there's a lot more. So then you have to like 
qualify for the finals at the Olympics and stuff like that. But for wrestling, no, you just go. There's probably like maybe 20 people in the bracket, and that's that's the U.S. Olympic bracket you're talking about. Um, or is that a little different structure? The U.S. Olympic bracket is probably it's probably the same amount of people. Okay, but but you again, it's only for one spot. Yep, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I was just saying the tournament structure of like one match because one match leading up to the finals and the finals three yeah and is u.s olympic trials the same way just for clarification yeah okay yep so so the the reigning champ or whoever has that is just such an advantage that just yeah <laughs> I, that as a as a competitor that seems fucking ridiculously unfair to me but um yeah it is what it tough. is hey yeah yeah um that's yeah that's nuts but um, we kind of skipped this part just because we got into the conversation. But uh, as far as like your story getting up through wrestling and then becoming this Buckeye legend concept, um, you want to just rip through your story a little bit and kind of um, tell us how you got to where you're at now? Yeah, so I was, um, I was a two-time runner-up and then one-time state champ in high school. Uh, kind of... I got recruited to Ohio State a little bit, but I wouldn't say I was like a, a huge name in high school. I was pretty good. I think I was ranked like fifth or sixth in my weight class at the time. Um, you know, Ohio is a very competitive wrestling state for those listeners out there that don't know anything about it. Yeah. So uh, I get to Ohio State, and the room is just like full of absolute killers. Like I think Tervel – uh, Delagnev was the Olympic heavyweight, world team heavyweight at the time. He was still training. Um, JD Bergman and Kyle Snyder. JD was the 97 kilo guy yep. at the time. He was there training. Kyle was there training. And then you just had a whole mess of 84, 97 pounders that were super good as well. So I got the absolute snot kicked out of me <laughs> for. For a long time, my freshman year, it was pretty tough. And then um, I got asked if I wanted to go to junior nationals for freestyle. I never wrestled freestyle before. Um, can, can you just break down some of the simple differences? Yeah. <laughs> so for for us uneducated uh, folks, folk style or like collegiate wrestling, the basic difference is it's uh, you get points based off control. So you take a guy down. You can't lock your hands on top. You have to ride them, and you can only get back points if you hold them on their back. Interesting. So they, they, they'll, you put them on past like 45 degrees, the ref will start counting. And if you get like two count, that's two points. And then in college, if you get four counts, it's four points. Okay. But there's no three points for some reason. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> You either get two or four. Okay. I don't know why. But, Easy enough. Yeah. And then for freestyle, it's based off exposure. So I take you down. I can lock my hands. And it's usually called like a gut wrench or a leg lace. And if I just expose your back to the mat, I get two points. So even even if it's just like in passing? Like yeah. If, if, if I roll out of whatever you're trying to do and the back touches, it's it's points. Let's go. Yeah. All right. And then there's so like there's feet to back stuff. If I throw you from your feet to back, it's four points or five points based off impact sound yeah <laughs> oh, if your feet go over your head it's it's five points oh man so, but and, um, and the the freestyle is what all the professional uh wrestling leagues and worlds and u.s is all based off of yeah so okay. anything um that has to do with like worlds or olympics is all freestyle okay. or greco-roman all right let's go but I, well i'm, I'm gonna be tuning Greco, in now so. so i got i gotta get my my iq up yeah so greco is basically the same as freestyle except you can't touch the legs so it's all throws. Interesting. So what what uh, tournaments are that that style? So just, yeah, worlds and Olympics too. Oh, so so, free, so freestyle style. you can't touch the legs either. So freestyle you can, but Greco you can't. They're like two different. It's basically two different sports. Okay. If you think about it like that. Okay, so in the Olympics there's wrestling and Greco Roman wrestling. Yeah. Okay. All right. Didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so again, IQ is super low. <laughs> I'm super stupid in this in this good. concept, but yeah. Um, so, do, so you're fresh. So, the, so did you redshirt your freshman year then? Yes. Okay. So then you had four years after that, correct? Yeah. Um, so your freshman year is just a grind. Total grind. Yeah. <laughs> but so like, what, what are some things like very early on you took from the older guys, all these dogs you're running around with? Um, just well, the biggest change from high school to college is probably 
just the amount of effort, right? That it that it really takes. So, um, just watching how seriously everyone took the sport and just the way they would approach it, how focused they were all the time, was really eye opening to me. Well, it's a, it's kind of like a because <clears throat> where do you where do you go to high school at? Norway. Okay. But it's still like a big fish, small pond. Like you, like the, you probably didn't have a lot of guys at your high school that were pushing you every day. No, I had like eight kids on my high school team. Okay, so, so yeah, so yeah, so you're. But that, oh, dude, that's sweet. That I didn't even know that part of your story. That's juicy. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So now you're big fish, big pond, other big fish. Yeah. And you're learning fast. Yeah. So just and the technique difference was just um, light years ahead. Huge. So just absorbing as much information as i could you're always asking questions like sorry you're good we already had a door knock post, <laughs> post guys dropping off my drugs all that kind of stuff yeah <laughs> so even after i i was done wrestling somebody like kyle or travel would go up and be like did you notice anything i was doing like did you see anything that i could be working on so stuff like that i think helped a lot but that's like so like, something that I think is cool about jujitsu and obviously it's reflected in wrestling too is the like that takes some like courage and vulnerability to like walk up and say like what was I doing wrong and that kind of and yeah. that, but the the culture that's already there is just nails. I think that's really cool because I, I don't think that's as available in football. No, I yeah, I would say wrestling's a very inviting um culture to just go up and be like to ask questions. Yeah, so I mean, you've seen it a little bit at Ohio State as a coach now, where some guys won't come up and ask. Like, if like, so if, again, if I'm a freshman walking in and I see you in there, I'm like, one, I'll try and wrestle you and probably get my ass kicked for sure. <laughs> but I'm gonna try and learn as much as possible. Same as like jujitsu go with the black belts. I prefer to get my ass kicked and learn than yeah. like go against another white belt and chill. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. or not chill, but like just have two inexperienced people knocking heads. But like, so what do you think? What percentage of the team? I know this is kind of a weird question is like in that like growth curious mindset and what kind of group shows up and just shows up <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah. It, it's tough I, we have this thing i think we started my senior year we call it the black shirts so everyone wears gray and then kind of the top of the top of the team um get to wear black shirts nice to practice and everywhere so i would say those guys obviously embody that kind of curious mindset nice and there's probably maybe six six of them out of like 33 guys so oh, obviously there's, a, there's only number. six black shirts of the oh that's sweet but yeah. I, I like how he like the is, this is a tom ryan thing was he yeah. your coach senior year was he your coach the whole time uh-huh okay I, I, I like ways to like tangibleize like the mental skill like if that's like like we, in football like what like the starters get to wear like a black jersey or something like that in yeah. nebraska and things like that do similar things like you got to earn it and then mm -hmm. like that's like a whole nother level is just six of the entire team have that level of probably knowledge curious like growth mindset whatever ends up becoming com competitive dog whatever yeah. it identifies what, what's like the criteria to get the shirt uh, there's, I don't know if there's a set criteria for it. I know it has to be unanimously, unanimously yeah. <laughs> agreed upon by all the black shirts and the coaches. Oh, that's sweet. So you kind of see someone, how they're working, how they're performing. You kind of get together and just if one person doesn't agree, then it's no black shirt. So everyone's got to agree, um, that they've kind of made that jump to the next level. I love that structure. I, for, like, cause like we, in football we'll have like in college, I had a, le we had a leadership council quote unquote. Yeah. But, um, but, it, and it was voted upon, but so like, yeah, it's maybe the most vote getters and that kind of thing, but there's no like unanimous, like they hold the fucking standard. Like, I think that's really cool. I think that structure could yeah. definitely be adopted in other sports. Like that's, and it can be taken away at any time. Ooh. So how's, how's that conversation come up? Um, it hasn't happened yet. Okay. All right. So. Cool. Yeah. I'm not, and I'm not trying to get like dirt on anybody by any means. I don't have to say any names, but like that, uh, I like that a lot. Again, it's, it's cause I think everybody at every level faces the demon of complacency. And yeah. so like, even if you earn the black shirt, it's like the never arriving thing. And it's, it's the same reason. Like you're like, you're, you're already in a great position professionally, but now you're looking for new things to dial in like that's what that's why i started the podcast like i want people that are like chasing edges in that realm and it's not just the nutrition and supplements it's mindset 
culture, structure, company you keep, whatever, whatever you're listening to, all that stuff. I just think it yeah. compounds, but like that's a, that's a, that's a nails little structure. I'm going to try, I'm, I might yeah. try and reach out to some football coaches and see how they would implement that. Yeah. And I think it's helped a lot. And I think just like you said, the visual aspect helps guys a lot too, because they can walk in and they can watch a guy with a black shirt and see what he's doing. You don't have to come in and guess who the leaders are on the team. Yeah. Right. You walk in, you see, he's got a black shirt. Yeah, you on, got a lighthouse. Like, like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's, um, that's got, that's gotta be ingrained into other sports. Like that needs, like, I just, yeah. like, cause like just tangibilizing leadership and mental skills is really hard. Anyways, I actually started a podcast before this called leaders these days. It's like during COVID and like, I was upset that like people are always pointing the finger. I want like to talk to leaders and I, I got a few on before I switched the name of it, but, um, it's really hard to like tangibilize what is leadership, who's a leader, how'd they become a leader, like in those kind of things. But like, that is like a light switch for me to say like, Oh, we know they earned it. It's continually like monitored, voted on like that kind of thing. I think that's, that's dialed. And then, and even in like the mental skills range now, like mental skills and wrestling gotta be banana. Like they're so paramount and, but it's also, yeah. I mean like, but you, like you kind of, you compete year round, obviously, correct? Mm-hmm. So like, it's not like you have like the Olympic blues from like one year and you don't get to wrestle again, like that on that stage for four years. Like, yeah, there's, because you, but you get chances to like compete constantly. Yeah. So there's, like I said, there's always like the ranking series tournaments or the US Open and then there's a world championships every year in between. So nice. there's always something a couple months away. So how do, how do you approach your mental side of the game? Um, For me... I, don't know, I struggled a lot with that early on in college um, just because I put a lot of like expectation on the like the result yeah. of wrestling, especially when I started getting good. I would like I would get really pissed off if like somebody who I didn't think was good kept it close with me yeah. or took me down or like if I was wrestling somebody good, it was like, well, crap, like can't lose this one. Yeah. Especially if it was like close, like I was ranked number one my sophomore year. If I was ranked, I was wrestling the number like four kid. I'd be like, "Well, crap! I can't lose this one." <laughs> or I or gotta like, win by double points because <laughs> yeah. I'm two, two positions yeah, higher. Yeah, or it's like the number fifteen ranked kid, and I didn't major him. It would like it would mess with my head a lot. And so I think for me, switching it to kind of kind of uh, like framing everything to be in a very like positive like constructive way has been really helpful like no matter what so if you had a tough practice or you had a tough match framing it as okay i had the toughness to not be at my best but still win this match Mm. or not be at my best but i still tried my ass off at practice today like my effort was great yeah everything nothing was clicking nothing felt right but I, I, I fought everything. So like that kind of mental switch helped me really just stay positive in the sport. Cause it, it kind of, if you can get negative in wrestling, it, it piles on you really, really quick Yeah, because definitely. you can get beat up. Yeah. You know? And you can't point the finger. <laughs> you yeah. can't, yeah. as my, as my coaches, the other players as this scheme or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's a, dude, that's, um, I really, cause I, I talk about this a lot on the podcast too, is like controlling the effort mm-hmm. and like, obviously like that sounds like what you found. And then like, obviously like human, like humans in general have this negativity bias where you're always going to solve problems, but I don't see, I never, like, it took me a long time. I didn't learn this till like I was in the NFL where like, I'd still have a good game and, or like you still probably won a match, but you didn't want by as win as much or like I had two missed tackles or whatever yeah. ends up being. And you're beating yourself up on both ends of the spectrum. Like wh- whether you really lost and like you took an L that you shouldn't have, like, okay, beat yourself up, put a boundary on it and move forward. But uh-huh. then like, if you're still winning, like, yeah, you can be frustrated, but it needs to be constructed. Like you can't like beat yourself up on a win. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just, yeah. uh, it like, it's, that's actually, that doesn't make sense. That's not a good way to live. So like I, I had to dial back my negativity and it turned into more like an assessment growth mindset concept. And it sounds like that's what you found. Yeah. And I think, you just kind of removing your like identity from like my sport too helped a lot. So like if I was doing good at wrestling, I was like feeling really good. Yeah. How'd you do that? 
a lot of it through my faith okay right awesome. so that that helped me tremendously kind of like finding your worth in something that is that can't be like taken away from other people yeah, or massive. results it's like helped me tremendously when, when did you start to lean more on that um i always grew up christian um but until you kind of encounter like some real and it I say real hardships, but yeah. it's not. But in comparatively, the, in, in, the, in the context of the task you're trying to accomplish, like it is, yeah, it yeah, is big. So yeah. I, I kind of got upset at nationals my sophomore year. Like that kind of I got upset at nationals <laughs> my sophomore. The year. drywall says I got upset. Yeah, yeah. I was like <laughs> number one ranked kid, number one seed, lost in the quarters, got thrown my back and pinned, and uh, so that was kind of like a crazy point to where if you go online after that, it's like just the most negative place in the world. Yeah, for so sure. So that was kind of where I realized that I was like, okay, I've put too much of my identity and how I did at nationals this year. Can't do that again. Too emotionally taxing, like feel like crap all the time. Now I'm really, really going to start to take this seriously. Yeah, start solving the problem. Yeah. Yeah, and that, but that, that takes such a level of awareness at 19 years old or whatever, 20 years old, whatever you were. Like I, like, I didn't have that wisdom that young. Like, I still was battling those those negativity demons and stuff all the way through pro football. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, that's – I think that's really cool. Did you Anything, like, stick out? Like, that was – the Nationals is, like, your big kind of fork in the road in that realm. Yeah, that, that whole year was just so, like, stressful because our team was so good. It was probably – in my opinion, is one of the best college teams ever. We were definitely uh. the best not to win it. I think we had scored more points at nationals than any other team in history besides Penn State, who beat us that year by, like, three or four points. Uh. That's crazy. So, like, it was just so – I put so so much of it, like, on my back just because it was – we had a lot of seniors that year that were really good. And – uh so yeah, it was just I put way too much stress. Yeah, I, I put, <laughs> too. It, it wasn't as important as I made it to be. Yeah, I mean, and, and I, I like to de demystify stuff. Like wrestling goes back way farther than all my other jokes about it. Where like football is made up by some drunks in Canton, basketball yeah. <laughs> in Massachusetts, like those kind of things. It's just it's a game that we make up. But like the the wrestling thing is like true warrior shit from who yeah. knows from the Romans yeah. or whoever brought it to the to the mainstream. But like we like as athletes, we do. Be, that's I think that's the biggest part of like like pros leaving the game, like or even like college guys, even some high school like high school guys struggle to not be the athlete in college and things like that. And like, how do you teach that? And like, it's some of it takes like trauma or like a, a yeah. massive loss and those kind of things. And I've gone more down like the goal setting things and that kind of stuff, where it's like the like the James Clear he wrote the book Atomic Habits. Like he has this like identity based goal setting. Like I don't know if you've ever read the book. But instead of like making all your goals outcome based, like I'm going to be the number one in the country, I'm going to win by this many points every time, you're just this wrestler that's capable of doing all those things. Yeah. So I'm going to build this identity as it's like the example in the books, like smoking, like you're trying to quit smoking, like somebody offers you a cigarette, you said, no, I'm trying to quit or no, I don't smoke. Like your identity is this elite athlete i'm competitive i'm tough i'm a like like i know how to win even when I'm, everything's not on like that's my identity yeah and then now like all the outcomes come because i'm capable of i'm capable of winning in the world i'm capable of winning all these things like i i, I like that methodology mm -hmm. a lot yeah i like that yeah but that's what you did naturally yeah. <laughs> intuitively that's that's so yeah. tight like that's i wish i was smarter when i was younger yeah. which i think is everybody's uh biggest regret um but so another thing that massively well like so actually while we're in this in the concept so like you like your redshirt freshman year, like you're all American. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So like you're fighting off that sophomore slump that whole season too. So like that weight's yep. just all that. Yeah. That's uh that's even more compounding. And then <laughs> obviously then you dominated the, the, the rest of your career. As far as like the one thing that massively intrigues me about wrestling is the training. Um, I've, I've ran with you guys a little bit and just getting buried and like football is just a different energy system. And at least uh -huh. that's my excuse for getting buried <laughs> by you guys. But, um, uh, how do you, like, I guess, how do you approach your training? Like, how do you know, like your training's an edge? Like what, like what makes you feel like what type of training makes you feel confident, uh, walking into a match? 
Uh, I think in wrestling, and I'm sure it's like this for every sport, the, like the best conditioning or like the best training you can do for wrestling is to wrestle mm. like a lot. So there's nothing really out there that quite like mimics it to the point to where like you're live wrestling all the time or you just in it using like it's such a mix of like muscle and you know conditioning yeah it's it's a, it's a weird like it's strength it's strength replicate. and yeah no that's that's a great point i never even thought of it like that where it's yeah. like oh i'd be running this far and, or doing this with this weight vest on and but like really yeah. like that the most functional thing is the sport hey but i i would say you have to have all that like the baseline stuff yeah. you have to have a really strong baseline strength and our preseason for college is basically we're the cross country team oh damn like (laughs) we we used to run (laughs) so much and it was all like you know the c decks at ohio stadium or we were the grandview hills probably once a week that's uh, Um, yeah just to give people some context uh so i ran this hill with uh probably four of the wrestlers that day um, it's like a quarter mile. Is it 0. 0.3 or something I like that? I think it's almost exactly a quarter mile is what we mapped out. So it's a quarter mile. I don't want to know what the incline is, 15, 20 degrees. I don't know. But um, that's a long hill run. It's like running a 400, obviously, uh, uphill, which is yeah. a absolute bitch. Um, and I, like, I, I'm a little out of my game shape, obviously, but I got buried by, what we do, three or four? Like we, yeah, four of them. Yeah, and then you, we, as we're walking down, uh, Colin was telling me about his, their wrestling days at Ohio <laughs> State, and so you, you guys, they're running like eight, and then like doing a like a buddy carry, like carrying a, one of your teammates up. The fucking yeah, hill. yeah. So we, used to, yeah, we used to do those all the time, like seven or eight of them, and then a buddy carry, uh, and then you'd have to run a mile back. Oh, oh, to back car. to the facility. <laughs> so. They'd make you park. You'd meet at like a big lots, like a mile down the road, and then you'd. That was like your warm up was the mile run to the hill. Yeah, and then that's. You do the hills, and then the worst part was like, your legs were basically numb by the end of it, and you had to run a mile back just to get to your car to go home. And I, yeah, that was just such a. At least you were done with the hills, but it was such a mental game to be like. Yeah. you're done but you're not really done yeah that's again like the whole the whole sport intrigues me like the like because i kind of saw it so like i i took some of the uh wrestlers here at my house through like sauna and ice but we did some extended like breath work stuff some of the mind strong stuff and like the concept that we talk about or i talk about a lot is like going to a dark place like obviously you guys go to the you guys just inhabit this dark place in your training yeah because i'm guessing like you're wrestling to levels of exhaustion similar to that right because you're like that's a training mechanism i guess yeah um and same you're running and doing all these carries and stuff to this dark level of exhaustion and like the cool thing for me as like a breathwork coach um is seeing it show up in the breath work like so these guys showed up and all of them could immediately hold their breath longer than two minutes um most of them on an ex their one of their first couple rounds of exhale holds and things along that but like some of the kids that i can't remember how long um i'm blanking on their names the the skinnier guys they they held their breath like De- yeah demilio and clay reeves held their breath yeah for clay a long time. Yeah, yeah clay <laughs> clay like closed in on like four minutes or something crazy on the last one and then the head coach tom ryan holds his breath in the ice the first so like we do a a, a, a more aggressive do not do this at home without parental yeah. supervision <laughs> Um, but on our last round of the sauna ice cycles, we'll do a breath hold underwater and get like a bigger amplification of um, kind of like the contraction, of the fascia on the head and the neuroepinephrine dump, that kind of thing. But it's also just like a mental toughness thing yeah. and like how comfortable like you're coming out of a high heart rate in the sauna. And like now you got to hold your breath. It, it's tough. And Tom walks out and holds his breath for two minutes in the ice, which is like it took me <laughs> like <laughs> months to work up to that. Um, so, but anyways, like you guys inhabit this dark place. Like, so how do you like, what's your relationship with this level of exhaustion, I guess, is my question. Yeah, I think you have to just be super comfortable in there because at first when you do all this like conditioning and, and cross training and stuff, I would try to kind of like take my mind off it, like put my mind somewhere else while I was like dying on the bike or something like that. But in wrestling, there's really no way to do that. Like I've hit that exhaustion point in like a match before. And it's a terrifying, scary feeling because everything your body 
is like almost cramping. You can't move it. And there's another grown man Try, trying coming to, at yeah. you, trying to put you on your back and like slam you to the mat. And it's, it's terrifying. So you can't like, so like to your point, like on the bike, you can't be mindless at any point. Like, so you, you always kind of have your mind active in that dark place. Yeah. So now I'm like, I want to be in it. I want to talk myself through it. Let's like go. I want to, like, I want to, we call it like chosen suffering. So when you're on the bike, like you're suffering, but you, I, I try and keep my mind in it and kind of talk myself through and kind of like almost catch, like get my mind to be like more relaxed in that like chaotic your body's exhausted like you're almost on the brink of like it's so easy to just stop yeah it's, it's, it's just you know it's like just being like this sucks i'm done because like, well, like the bikes and like some of the rowers and all those kind of things like if you take one rep off like rpms and things like that go down but like it's but again just easy like it's like running a 400 and you're closing on the last 50 meters like oh i'll pull up and like yeah. you can do, like it can be that quick of a decision like it just one thought can cripple that uh -huh. max effort concept so just especially i find it most when i'm on the bike just because there's there's nothing else to do right <laughs> yeah so you're not going anywhere you yeah. can take yourself to a pretty dark place on these bikes we have so for me i'm always just like i find myself fighting off some some dark thoughts of like <laughs> give me an example of a bike workout you're doing just for um, my context so i think the one is is this a salt bike or like the speed bike i don't know what it's called are. a watt bike so it's, it's like the, it's a stationary bike the um, spin class kind of bike yeah with resistance yeah so it has a metal or the magnet yeah yeah thing and then the front of it has like an aerodyne component to it so you can kind of open it up from like one to ten Okay. And a 10 gets all the air in there. So it's super hard. Okay. And that makes it more of like an aerodyne feel. Kind of a hybrid. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. So the, my least favorite one yep. is like probably like yeah. a 15 minute warm up, And then it's uh, three minutes. And so I, I don't know if you're familiar with like FTP. No. So it's your functional threshold power. Well, let's go. Something like that. So Sounds you sweet. do a bunch of yeah. tests. It calculates your F FTP. Um, so I think mine is somewhere around like 275 Watts or something like that. Sounds good. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. you do like three minutes, it might be like three minutes at like 285 and then two minutes at like 315 and then one minute at like 340. Oh, so just getting harder and harder. Yeah. And okay. then you get like a minute and a half off and then you do that again. And that one like makes me rethink just like wrestling, do I ever wrestling get on that whole, bike yeah. again like but you show up again regardless yeah. yeah so that one there's so many times that just pops into my head where it's like yeah, i've been biking for 20 minutes like that's probably good enough yeah and then i catch myself and i'm but like stopping like no you're gonna finish the freaking workout but it shows up like a hundred times probably hey like yeah how, yeah all the time yeah, and it's it, but so I guess your relationship with that voice now it's just like like you hear it and you say fuck you kind of keep going. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's that's helped me a lot in just the chaos of matches to where like the guy might be overwhelming me and you might go out of bounds. They just push you out, and on the way back, I find myself talking to myself on the way back to kind of like refocus nice. and like regain my thoughts. I and like that a lot. a lot. Yeah, dude, that's dope. Um, just uh, last one in the mental skills department. Um, just preparing for like mentally, like the like thirty minutes or like couple, whatever your, your routine is before a match. Like, how do you um, get your mind right for a match? Um, I like to be. I like to just relax and kind of joke around, and then probably like when I'm three matches out. So we call it in the hole. Okay. Um, I'll start kind of walking around and then that's another place too, where you're just kind of battling thoughts that creep into your head. Yeah. Like before a match, like all the what ifs, like what if this happens? What if this happens? So for me, um, that is like, I have a mantra or like what I want to do in the match. I'll just say that over and over and over Let's again. Let's go. So for me, it's move your hands, move your feet, fake, shoot. And I'll just say that over and over and over again. And then like maybe a match out, 
I'll tell myself, like, I'll throw in just expect a fight, expect a fight, expect a fight. Like, I'm fully ready for this guy to cut everything he has and for it to be, like, an all-out war. Hell, yeah. Because at first, my first two years, maybe a college or three years, I was always like, I'm going to kill this kid. I'm going to freaking go out there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip his head off. I'm going to break him. But then, if they don't break... You, you, that frustra- momentum yep, shit frustration shows and now yep. you get super tired so i was like okay these guys are gonna fight me really hard like be ready for it and that almost helped me to like now i'm expecting it now yeah. i'm expecting them not to break i'm still trying to break them but if they don't i'm still ready for it's it. it's not gonna change your game yeah Dude, that's a that's a savage perspective. So, <laughs> that I like, that's oh, helped a lot. Yeah, I mean, like, because like everybody wants to be the superhero that texts somebody, or um, even like good wrestlers and those kind of things, or finishes or makes the big play and that kind of thing. But like, if yeah. it doesn't happen, it can't affect your performance. Like, you, like you still have to have this like foundation that's mm-hmm. unbreak. That, like, as long as your foundation is kind of unbreakable, it sounds like is the yeah. the motto. But like, I, I like the mantra idea a lot. I've only I've only messed with mantras in like the meditation world. And, but like it, it's, it is super powerful, like what it does over time. Yeah. And like the, the control of your thoughts it gives you. I like that a lot. I've, I, I haven't talked to um, players in any sport that have used that. So that's really cool to hear. Yeah. I think the, the goal is just to get into that flow state where you're not thinking really at all. I mean, like there's some matches to where I came off the mat and I had no idea what happened. Like, I don't know how I can't remember how I scored or like like I have to watch the video again and I'm surprised like that's what happened. That's awesome. And so that's like the goal of all my matches. Like I want to come off and you're just not thinking at all. You're just going out there and everything's reaction. That, and it's, it's kind of like uh, I think it's Bill Belichick has a saying that like you don't fall to the level of your expectations. You fall to the level of your training. Like you've trained that so dialed that like like you react yeah. and it's yeah. and it's like and and your heart is fucked to beat <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you know like that's that's super tight i just think that's a really cool um i guess perspective on i guess the mental skill of it yeah, yeah i i just uh I'm, I'm trying to remember like my i guess mental process and like when i was truly in flow like our game says stop and go yeah that'd be tough yeah so it's just but like there's there is games where like I'm like, it's not like I'm having that much fun. I'm pl- probably playing well when I was closer to the flow state. Even mm-hmm. like I had some bad games too, where just like the game was over. I'm like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> okay. Like I yeah. was just in it. So like, I-, I wish I was a little more intuitive with how to influence that more because like you, you primed yourself for it. And then you've done like the self assessment after to find the, like kind of like the, I guess, frequency you wanted to wrestle at. Yeah and now you know how to get there and stay there and then talk to yourself when you're in the fight yeah that's Mm -hmm. yeah that's all compounding into a pretty cool deal yeah and that's i didn't think about that for football it's like so much stoppage to where i feel like you do do you almost have to like get yourself ready again like every time you go out for defense like for me it's it might be similar because like every time you go out for a match i do the same thing over and over again but those might be like two hours apart or like an hour apart. Yeah. Um, yeah. T- to some extent. Yeah. It's cause there is some chaos on the sideline in between reps or series and those kind of things. Or, yeah. but like for me, I put like, I didn't play a lot of defense. I played primarily special teams in the NFL, but like in college and um, Canada and a little bit in the NFL, like I, like it's kind you got to redial yourself in. Like you can't just like, but sometimes like it's a turnover and you're going straight from, you're talking with your coach, looking at the iPad, trying to solve a problem. And you gotta go straight out there yeah. and things like that, where it's like, you kind of, you, you still fall to the level of your training, like, like assignment alignment are dialed going into the game. So like, yeah. and we have a whole week every time you guys are similar scheduling as, but like, I guess now you change opponents. Like, cause we don't, we don't change opponents every week. You change opponents every match. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> which is another whole nother wild card of a strategy concept, but yeah, like for me, a lot of like games when I knew I was only going to play special teams besides like niche scenarios like goal line and those kind of things, um, I had like my checklist of like, like I knew my strategy against this person um, on this set on punt, punt return, like all those kind of things. So I kind of, yeah. I, I redialed in every time. Yeah. 
um but like those games where like i didn't lose focus are probably the, the more flow state ones and so like i i, I and then eventually I, kind of, I found the breathing kind of my last year but i ended up playing hurt but yeah like all those things like started to influence that yeah so but no that, that's a uh, football football and wrestling are different yes yeah. they <laughs> massively <laughs> different yeah but they uh they um I don't know there's, there's still a bunch of parallels and like obviously the, i wish the structure in football was like wrestling from like the help and like it's like competitive compassion like it's just like this cool um environment where like i guess i actually do you guys experience the i guess you guys are wrestling for the same spots obviously like guys on your team yeah and those kind of things so like and like is there like a make the team like i know you guys have a wrestle off for like starting positions mm -hmm. at the beginning of every year in college correct yep so is there like hoarding of information similar like 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 you kind of like were resistant to it with the u.s team but obviously everybody shares like is or is it just um, it's just that ingrained that everybody's always just kind of in that that state i don't know i think at least for me i never held anything back i got you just it, because it's also a bad question so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no i mean for the most part no i think everyone likes to share just because at least at Ohio State, we just you build that culture where it's like if he's getting better, that's gonna make yeah, it's, it's gonna have to make me get yeah. better. Like even yeah. if I show him what I'm doing, that's gonna force me to learn something else. Yeah, rising tide lifts all ships. It. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. no, for the most part, I think obviously when you I've seen it like guys getting closer to a wrestle off or like a tournament or something, they'll stop wrestling each other yeah, in the room I, like a week or two before. Um, but for me, I think the one year I was like the only 97 pounder on the roster. Oh, damn. So I never really ran into that I gotcha. problem too much. Or like my senior year, the other 97 pounder was red shirting. Okay. Like, so even if I wrestled him off, he was red shirting. So there was no like conflict. There. I got you. Yeah. Then, then uh, back to the the training a little bit. As far as like the strength side of it, what what what's your guys' big focus as far as like wrestling strength? Is it is it this full body like legs, abs, grip, like all the above? Yeah, I think you have to find that balance of like just baseline strength and like functionality to wrestling. So for me, I was always just like a meathead i wanted to come in i wanted to bench i wanted to do arms maybe a little bit of legs yeah but um i think you know obviously i trained with dustin he's helped me a lot just kind of like build in some functionality to a lot of those big movements like deadlift and i think the lunges has helped me tremendously yeah i think, just they're, get I think stronger they're incredible in wrestling so stuff like that but during like in season i would say i just I always wanted to just feel strong. So I didn't need to actually be strong lift yeah. Yeah. and like go crazy in the lifting. Cause wrestling, you get so strong wrestling just cause you're, you're trying to move another guy like the whole time. It's yeah. constant squeeze, pull, pushing, driving. Um, so about once a week I would come in, I would do one rep of 315. I would build up to one. No, you still had it. Yeah. 315, just so I had it. I do a little bit of arms, a little bit of core, and that was like my lifting during the season. I got you. It but, made me feel strong, and then I I just was strong on the mat. Yeah. So there's kind of like a mental aspect to it. And and the brutality of the sport. Um, what like what are co like common injuries? Like is it neck, shoulders? Is it like knees? Like what's a what what's kind of like the theme there? I would say shoulders and knees. Okay. Are the the really big ones? Just because you're constantly shooting and that stress on your shoulder when they're sprawling a lot of rotator cuffs um and then you're always ripping on guys knees okay when you're in on their legs interesting yeah yeah that makes it so like like, but it's, but it's not like it's not like a crazy. yeah a leg lock or anything like that yeah so lcls go like crazy i've i know a lot of guys that wrestle with no acl yeah yeah I, I've, I've heard of that too. I've, I've heard that in very rare occasions in other sports. Um, yeah. There's some offensive linemen that have gotten away with it. Like everything else in football, you can't. I, I had a girl in college that played a like entire lacrosse season without one, but she was doing some crazy stuff on the side. But yeah, um, yeah that's a that just intrigues me. Have you have you battled any injuries? Um, the probably this year was like my worst one. Um, 
<clears throat> I'm kicking stingers down the left side of my interesting, yeah, my neck and my arm. So it got progressively worse. It had happened like two years before this, and then kind of just went away. Um, but this one, it just kept getting worse. My arm was just going numb all the time, and so. Finally, at like world team trials, I thought I broke my neck in the in the what? semis. <laughs> Just casual so, neck neck break drop. Yeah. Anytime I would shoot this one shot, I would get hit. And my neck would go, and I would just drop from the pain. Just stinger. Like on the mat, mid match. Yeah. yeah. So that happened, and this was like the worst one I've ever had. And I remember sitting there on my back couldn't turn my head at all and i was like i just broke my neck like this this is mid i might be done yeah what what round of the <laughs> worlds is this this is in the semis of world team trials okay so first period um <laughs> not 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 feeling good at all i can't turn my neck at all my coach said my eyes were like going crazy um trying to like compensate for your neck or what yeah, you yeah i don't yeah. so i was just laying there finally got up um, do they like is there, is, there, is, there time, is there timeouts they say like you have trainer. a little injury time yeah i think you have like three minutes of injury time okay um but kept wrestling <laughs> i was gonna <laughs> say I, like i'm pretty sure you went to the final so like yeah. you obviously won this match <laughs> so kept the, wrestling the guy got super tired um took him down and didn't know how him. to talk to himself in the dark places yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so after that, um, I took like, I don't know, maybe a month and a half okay. off of wrestling. Just cause every time I would shoot, it was, I was getting like four or five stingers of practice, probably. Yikes, dude. I, I've, I've had stingers. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Um, wait, hold on. So time out, just to rewind. So did you wrestle in the finals of Worlds with your neck all fucked up? Yeah. Damn, dude. So the trainers came that night and worked on it a little bit still really couldn't turn my head that much yeah you can't i mean you can't re you can't reset (laughs) that overnight yeah it sucked um but they gave me like uh like a muscle relaxer okay like 30 minutes before yeah and the adrenaline of going to a wrestling match i didn't really notice it until again i tried to shoot and then i was like and just shot and then you just go numb down the whole side yeah Yeah. damn dude that that's that's tough as fuck. yeah (laughs) yeah then the guy kept like palming me in the forehead yeah and every time he would do it i would just feel that little pinch of pain down my neck and it just that just messed it just messed with my head yeah um, a lot too yeah we, we can cut this part if you don't want it on there but uh, have you resolved the issue for the most part yeah okay um i like but is it primarily like a nervous system thing is that what they're saying so I got like x-rays and MRIs and stuff. Everything and was negative. You're good. So basically they said I had no curve in the top of my spine. Okay. Um, and that's what was causing all like the, the pinching. Yeah. And I had like two slightly herniated discs. So I've been going like three days a week to the chiropractor. Okay. And nice. Just keep getting adjusted. And then they just, a bunch of rehab to kind of force that curve back right. on the top. Of my nice, neck. dude. You solved the, solving the problem. Yeah. Um, I, I've seen like I've seen some success with guys taking like these actually like ATP supplements, like adenosine triphosphate, which is like the energy in your cell. But like yeah. to help with like the, I, I've seen a lot of guys use it with drop foot. Um, okay. Those kind of things. Just side note, yeah. <laughs> as an edge potentially. I'll get into it. <laughs> um, but no, dude, that's fucking crazy tough to do that. But so. Um, I can't get over that. That's so damn, that's <laughs> fucking tight. Um, yeah. I mean, like I'm trying to think my, my logic too. like you, you beat the guy in the semifinals. Um, like you couldn't not wrestle, <laughs> you know, like yeah. that, that's kind of like a crazy, uh, think through process. Well, that's what, yeah. My coach was like, are you gonna, I woke up and they're like, are you, are you going to wrestle? Yeah. What was that? What was that conversation like? And it hadn't even like crossed my mind that like, I wouldn't, at least try to wrestle you know like especially like you said i beat the guy in the semis so his tournament's basically done yeah like if i i would feel yeah, terrible his heart broken his dream shattered. Him and then just not wrestling so now yeah. no one's in the finals and yeah. this guy just gets like a free walk 
onto the world team. Yeah. So I was like, no, it's not. I'm going to wrestle. All I'm right. going to try it. Obviously, if stuff goes south and it gets but that be- bad again, I might reassess during the match if it happens. But but, but you went through two matches, hey? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, two matches. I lost twice, but it's but, I mean, that's, out there. Yeah, but, that's, I don't know. That's like the, I don't know. I think that's setting up some serious fucking grit. Just, yeah. I mean. It's the same as like your freshman year just eating that. Um, you're like that whole year with some gods in the sport, and then now you're like you you've been through to, to hell and back in the sport too at the highest level in the championship match. Like I think that's uh, I'm excited for you. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Let's go. <laughs> oh man, dude. Yeah, uh, I don't know how long this has been running, but dude, uh, greatly appreciate your time. Dynamite conversation. Wow. Thank you for teaching me some things about wrestling. <laughs> I yeah, need it. Uh, right. Where can people find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. At more of Colin. Okay. M O O R E. Yep. Underscore of underscore Colin K O L L I N. Boom. Yeah. Everybody reach out, follow the boy, absolute stud. And then when the tournament start January, February. Uh Rome beginning of February, Istanbul the end of February. Okay, boom. And then when are worlds next year? The worlds are usually in uh anywhere from like September to October. Okay. So we're, uh, world team trials will be late April and then final X in June. All right. Final X. Just the, <laughs> yeah. Final X. I like, did, do you guys already have your final X guy locked in? Yeah. So, uh, depending on what weight I go, uh, what, what is uh, it between 97, 92 for you? Yep. Okay. So Kyle's at 97, he meddled and okay. then Jaden Cox is at 92 and he meddled. So they're both sitting in the finals. What, what, what they medal? Uh, Kyle took second and oh. Jaden took bronze. And this is Olympics you're talking about? With yep. Medals? Okay. All right. Well, I guess at uh, Worlds. Worlds. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. So do the the Olympic medals hold any weight in this world category? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it – because some – well, they, the weights cut down um, oh. during, to the Olympics. So there's 10 world weights for worlds and then they cut down to six weight classes for the olympics okay that makes more sense so it's not just like all gold medal guys waiting there kind of deal yeah okay that makes more sense well all right dude i greatly (laughs) appreciate your time hopefully i can keep training with you guys while you're around but yeah appreciate you yep thank you boom